This time I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm counting down my top 11 Dragon Quest monsters, but to be fair to all the mainline games, I'll be picking my favorite monster from each individual game. There are so many incredible monsters in this series, this list will be based on how cool the monsters look, how useful they are, and my overall love for each one. We're going to be starting at Dragon Quest XI and working our way all the way back to Dragon Quest I. I love these monsters so much that I'll be talking about the runner-ups as well. Make sure to like and subscribe, now let's begin! Dragon Quest XI Dragon Quest XI brought a plethora of great new monsters to a series that already had a multitude of them. But my favorite new addition is Jerkules himself. This big buff behemoth has four muscular arms that can be used to crush, smash, and pummel you into oblivion. He's not the most common monster to find in the game, but I just love his design and how it kind of feels like the natural progression of the Cyclops monster from previous games. The runner-up for Dragon Quest XI has to be the Mastodon, a giant moss-covered golem-like monster found near the world tree itself. These guys also have a coral counterpart that's just as cool. I just love the look and design of these guys, they also pack a mean punch and have some incredible durability. Dragon Quest X I've mentioned before in my Top 5 Puff Puffs video how Dragon Quest X is definitely the least played game in the series. The game has given us some of the best monsters in the entire series in my opinion, but fret not, for almost all the best ones made it into Dragon Quest XI as well. Ham Shamwich is one of my favorite Dragon Quest monsters of all time. It's just crazy to think how after all these years, Toriyama is still able to come up with instant classic monsters like this. Ham Shamwich is a little blue pig with a magical hat who wanders the coast near Julette in Weddy Country. I fell in love with this little guy the moment I first laid eyes on him, and I feel like he'll be a favorite of mine for years to come. The runner-up in Dragon Quest X is another incredible design that made it into Dragon Quest XI. That is, of course, the Royal Reptile. To me, this guy looks like a jacked up version of the Green Dragon from the original Dragon Quest. This design is one that feels much more modern than what the series usually has to offer, but it does such a good job of blending the new with the classic and fits in with the series so well. Dragon Quest IX A bit of a heads up, Dragon Quest IX is definitely the hardest game for me to get footage for, but my favorite monster that was introduced in this great game was Slyonheart. Slyonheart is like if a slime knight became a general or king of sorts. His design alone gives off the energy of someone who's incredibly brave and just. You can also get this guy in the mobile game Dragon Quest Tact, where he's incredibly useful. The runner-up for Dragon Quest IX would have to be the Boppin' Badger. This guy just looks so cool yet derpy. Some of the monsters in this series are downright hilarious and to me, that's where Boppin' Badger gets most of his charm. Dragon Quest VIII Dragon Quest VIII has a lot of monsters that kinda showed up here and then you never really see again. My favorite being the Sea Dragon. This guy is actually pivotal to the plot because you need him to recharge the magic mirror with his powerful dazzling attack. His design just looks so powerful and intimidating. When you first encounter this guy, it's kind of terrifying. His signature attack not only does damage, but can also leave your entire party dazzled, which makes most of your physical attacks completely miss. The runner up here is the Riptide. Riptide is like an aquatic spin-off of the Jumping Jackal. It's like if Wolverine from X-Men somehow looked even more sinister and could swim like a boss. It's a great monster design and he can even be recruited to join your monster party. Dragon Quest VII Similar to Dragon Quest VIII, Dragon Quest VII also had a lot of great monsters that were never really seen again in following main series games. My favorite of which being Captain Catastrophe himself, 
Also known as simply General, this half-cat, half-seasoned veteran of battle has a commanding presence. This is classic Toriyama's humanoid monster design at its finest. Although he hasn't been in a main series game since, I currently have him as one of my party members in the Dragon Quest Monsters 2 remake for the 3DS. Runner-up for Dragon Quest 7 is fan favorite Natsu Macho, also known as Dumbira. This barbarian-like monster walks around with his big sword, oomphing himself and his allies in order to lay the smack down on his enemies. His simplistic aesthetic shows off how much character these monsters can have, even when having such a simple design. Dragon Quest VI I'm currently streaming the Super Famicom version of Dragon Quest VI on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash dookie03. Despite VI not being among my favorites in the series, you can't deny that it gave us one of the most iconic monsters of the franchise in the Haxorus. Lizzie the Haxorus even joins your main party in Dragon Quest VI. Appearing in a multitude of other main series games and spin-offs, the Haxorus is known for being both a physical powerhouse and having strong breath attacks as well. The runner-up for Dragon Quest VI is another classic monster that's shown up in a bunch of different games in the series. The Hell Gladiator has multiple arms carrying multiple weapons and is known for attacking up to four times per turn if he feels like it, making him one of the most physically powerful monsters in the series. This dude can be a huge challenge if you aren't prepared for him. Dragon Quest V You're gonna hear this a few times in this video, but the Slime Knight is quite possibly my favorite monster in the series, and the main reason why I'm breaking down this list the way I am. It's really hard to nail down a favorite monster throughout the entire series, but by going game by game, I can focus on my favorites from each game. Slime Knight would easily be in my top 5 or even 3 monsters. The Slime Knight is a valiant knight riding a green slime as its trusty steed. Not only is this an iconic monster design, but this guy is incredibly handy in battle. Any game where you can recruit monsters, you can bet your ass I'll have a Slime Knight in my party at some point. They have some decent attacks, can equip some really good gear, but most importantly they have really decent healing and support magic. The Slime Knight truly is the jack of all trades, and in Dragon Quest XI-S, you can even ride one into battle yourself. The runner-up here would be the Mandrake Major, a big powerful dragon soldier. He's decked out in armor with a sword and is always a formidable foe when you first encounter him. Mandrake Majors are very intimidating and work well as the various villains in the series' henchmen. Dragon Quest IV Dragon Quest IV is one of my favorite games of all time, and it introduced a monster that would later on become one of my favorites in the series. The Dragon Rider shows up in a couple scary locations in Dragon Quest IV, where its physical attacks are as much a threat as its breath attacks are. These guys look absolutely insane, holding onto the back of the dragon like some sort of mad dragon rodeo star. They came back in Dragon Quest XI where now, if you can defeat them, the rider will fall off the back allowing you to take flight by riding the dragon yourself. Getting to take flight on one of my favorite monsters from my childhood is a breathtaking experience. The runner up for Dragon Quest IV is another great classic monster, the Were Tiger. Were Tiger looks like some crazy dude who decided to skin a tiger then make a giant onesie out of its fur. One of my favorite things to do starting in the remakes of Dragon Quest 3 is getting the in-game costume to make your character look like a were tiger. I always try to get it in every game where it's available, including of course Dragon Quest XI's version, where it makes Veronica look like a little kitty. I also love his spin-off version in Dragon Quest XI, Otter Shambles, who's found in the Arctic waters. Dragon Quest 3 Dragon Quest III added some iconic monsters that are fairly popular and have been around for decades. My favorite of which being the Boreal Serpent, aka the Snow Dragon. I love the Asian style dragon design and being from Canada, I'm always a bit partial to the winter monsters. The Boreal Serpent is a powerful ice dragon whose freezing ice breath can level an unprepared party in no time. 
His new spin-off, the Auroral Serpent, is an important part of the plot in Dragon Quest XI as well. It's been trapped under the ice for years, and when it awakens, it attacks the party as they try to make their way to Arborea on their journey to the World Tree. The runner-up for Dragon Quest III was known as Darth Bear on the NES. This dark, creepy-looking bear is a monster I've always loved. Unfortunately, its new name, Ursa Mega, isn't nearly as iconic, and he hasn't really shown up in a game since Dragon Quest III. But his spin-off can be found hanging around near Mount Huji in Hato in Dragon Quest XI, and still has that same creepy wild look to him. Dragon Quest 2 Despite being a nightmare to play at times, Dragon Quest 2 introduced a lot of iconic monsters for the series. My favorite of the bunch being the Orc King. These guys are powerful spearmen who can use multi-thrust style attacks, but that's not all. Orc Kings are an incredible asset to have on your side because they also have some of the best healing and revival magic available in the series. Every time I play Dragon Quest V, I make sure to recruit an Orc King to my party. Even when fighting against them in battle, they show how resilient they are when they constantly keep reviving their teammates, forcing you to defeat them all over again. I don't know what it is with these blue furred monsters, but as you saw with the Sham Hat Witch, I just love the way they look. Dragon Quest II's runner-up is none other than the Cyclops. It was so hard for me to choose between these two iconic monsters. Both are probably in my top six or so Dragon Quest monsters of all time. The Cyclops is a giant one-eyed monster known for smashing its enemies to bits. There's nothing more terrifying than finally getting through the cave to Roan and running into one of these guys. It's always a mad dash to the final salvation point, the Shrine of Roan. Once you collect yourself, however, these guys are great to grind on and were incredible to see in the newer games like Dragon Quest VIII and XI once you can see exactly how huge they are. Dragon Quest I. Oh, I know! A slime! It's gotta be a slime! My critiques? You're the guy that does those nostalgia reviews! I appreciate the input, but can you let me continue finishing my video? can't think of anything else it could possibly be. It's gotta be a slime. It has to. Look dude, if you just wait a second, you'll find out what it is. Dragon Quest 1 is where it all started. Each and every monster in this game is now an absolute icon of the series. But the one that stands above them all for me is none other than the Green Dragon. I remember my first time meeting him on my way to rescue Princess Gwaylin when I was just a kid. This dude was big, powerful, and terrifying. The original Green Dragon fight is one of the most memorable boss fights of all time in my opinion, and every time I see this guy in the later games, I get excited. Having him back in Dragon Quest XI was so cool to me, since I've loved this monster pretty much my whole life. I always try to recruit him in any game when possible, and he's always a really good monster to have on your side. There are also some great spin-offs like the Blue Dragon and the Dread Dragon who are just as badass. I love them in every mainline game, and of course, in every single Dragon Quest Monsters game, I just have to have him. He's probably my favorite Dragon Quest monster of all time. The runner-up in Dragon Quest 1 has to be... It better be a slime. Can't think of anything else it could possibly be. Nope, it's the Draki. I remember running into him as a kid. He was the second monster I'd ever encountered in the series, and I immediately fell in love with his simple, bat-like design. He's definitely a weak little scrub, even his most powerful spin-off monsters are all pretty weak, but for some reason, this little guy will always have a special place in my heart. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did, please remember to like, subscribe, and click that notification button so YouTube doesn't bury my content on you. You can join me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash 3 where I've been streaming Dragon Quest VI in the evenings and Castlevania Portrait of Ruin on Sunday mornings. Thanks again for watching, and have a great rest of your day!